Let's bring him on a five-time Pro Bowler, Ravens, Panthers, and uh, all-time tough guy. Peanut Tillman told me last week, I said, who is the Peanut Tillman, great Chicago Bear and, and yep. Panther? I said, who's the toughest guy you ever defended? He said, actually, the big guys I was okay with. He goes, Calvin Johnson, I could push around. He said, I hate playing Steve Smith. A little small guy gets inside you, tough guy, uses his butt leverage. He goes, I, I hate playing those guys. They ate me alive. So uh, tip of the cap to you. Okay. Awesome. Are you going to, I mean, you, when I think of you, you remind me a little bit of an offensive Ray Lewis. You love the game. I mean, you, yes. I, I don't even, I could watch with the sound down. I'd be like, that guy loves the game. So you're going to miss it, right, Steve? Of course I'm going to miss it. Um, it was actually unique to this weekend, uh, Deuce, uh, Stevon Smith Jr., He's uh, we're feeding him, and he says, uh, "Dad, you're not on TV. You don't play football." <laughs> because usually, Dad's on away games. He's watching me on TV. Right. He was sad. He started crying. I was like, "Oh." So he he loved that, Dad. You were his TV star. Yeah, I guess so. You know, and so he he really enjoyed that, and he he just thought, like, why isn't Dad? Dad shouldn't be in the live in the kitchen right now. Dad should be on te on television. Yeah. And we were watching the football games, watching the playoff games, and he just didn't like that. So it was, it was kind of like, oh, that. And so I was like, dang, that kind of sucks, you know? You you have a defensive player's mentality as an offensive player. You want to punish people. You are physical. You're intimidating. Now, Odell Beckham is definitely an offensive player. He is flashy. He like You were, again, I, I look at you almost as a defensive player. Well, all wide receivers are flashy. A lot of offensive guys in a skill position. Why? To some degree are flashy because that's what you see. You know, that's, that's, that is what you see when you watch football. Offensive guys are flashy. Uh, skill guys, you see corners and safeties on defense. What are they? They're flashy. That is the history of our game, whether you like it or not. Billy White Shoes. Uh, Deion Sanders, you look at those guys and they were flashy. Just like when you see a linebacker or a guy make a sack, you know, he's going to throw the quarterback down. You know, he's going to roll over. He's going to do things. There are characteristics in certain positions that over time, good or bad, good football, bad football, those behaviors are going to be emulated. Now, now, many people, though, think, Steve, with Odell Beckham, that his personality sometimes distracts him from the game, does it to you? I don't think it does, but I, but I have to say yes, because I'm not there and I don't also know, I don't know the whole story. But if you just kind of put everything in perspective, if he, he wouldn't went out there and caught seven passes for 150 yards and they lost, we wouldn't be talking about it. If he put up seven catches for 150 yards and they won, we wouldn't be talking about it. But the fact is he they had lost. The, and he had two, multiple drops. The pressure of the game of the playoffs, just like the New York Giants, the Oakland Raiders, and the Miami Dolphins, all those teams folded under pressure. Bottom line, whether they went to Miami or not, Players at Miami probably went to the club at some point during their at their time, had had a glass of water. Everybody playing this weekend has something to celebrate, and they did. Going to the playoffs, they did. There's probably some guys on teams that didn't play this week celebrated this week because they had a week off and they didn't have to deal with it. But the difference is the one thing that hurts everybody on the New York Giants, whether they participated in that trip or not, is the photographs. That's telling on you. They, they, they posed for photographs. It yes. wasn't like TMZ. It wasn't somebody called them on the low. No, no, no. And, hey, you know, they had to. They posed. You know. Like that to me, I, if you get That hurts you. I don't think it. Here's it the doesn't thing. help you. <laughs> it, now, I, I, we were talking about this yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you watch golf a lot. I don't much after, since Tiger left. but well, Golf watches me a lot. Okay. All right. That's fair. I, t I take a lot, few naps when I want to take a nap. I watch golf. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I've quit watching since Tiger left mostly. But I've seen great players choke. I, I don't like choke. I've seen great players. Not Greg, perform. Not perform. I've seen LeBron, A-Rod, great players. I made this argument that when Odell Beckham did the boat thing and he went to Green Bay and he dropped the first throw, Odell's smart enough to think, oh, geez. here we go. Here's what in like they say in baseball, 
Like if you're first at bat, you hit a guy, the yeah. confidence grows. In basketball, you hit the first J, your confidence grows. Have you ever in your career dropped a pass early and it affected you? Absolutely. Uh, dropping a pass early or not getting a ball until the second or third quarter affects you. It does. You, you check out. You check out. You, you Mentally, you check out because then you start to go. You have a negative self-talk. You have all these conversations within yourself. The same conversations you have with yourself when you're balling. Hey, this, this guy can't cover me. You have this negative conversation with yourself. Offense coordinator is uh, he's on that BS. Look at, you know, they're not getting me open. They're not putting me in position. You to start, be, you start be talking percent, to yourself during the game. Yes, be, uh, to uh, be successful. On run, why are they calling this dang run play right now when it should be a pass? You start, to, you start to talk yourself out of it. Then the pressure of the game. Then you want to perform. So then you start pressing. Then when you catch a pass, you think about catching it and your head goes this way and the ball is left on the ground. So you just start overthinking things. The pressure of the game, you start to psych yourself out. And you're going to be a Hall of Famer, and you there have been games. There have been, there have been times that that's happened. I had to think, okay, and, and, and what I do is I clap my hands. And when I clap my hands, I'm resetting my mind. Fix it. Move on. Let's go. Uh, if a ball is overthrown, if a pass is, isn't where I would have liked it, made it catchable. You know, there are times where I've caught a pass and I go, you know, I've gotten up. You know, sometimes I say, oh, you catch a three-yard pass or you spin it. There's been times I caught a pass. It was a hard pass to catch, and I get it and spin it. And I said, man, look at me. I'm damn good. But I'm talking myself into that. Yeah, I have no problem with that. that you know, listen, but when you things are going bad and a big game, this is a big game. Odell drops that. First, then get to extend his arms. It's a little close to his body. He likes to extend his arms. He drops it. I'm thinking, <laughs> he's thinking about the boat. No, what he's thinking about, honestly, he's like, oh, man, here we go. It's going to be one of those days. Yes. I'm going to miss my first four jumpers. I've seen it with other guys uh, playing other teams. I've, seen, I've been on the sideline and a guy uh, was playing, and I won't say his name. He dropped two passes. And I was like, he's done for the day. <gasps> no, I, think done. That, I think it's true. I think he even among done. the the greatest. I'll tell you a story. I won't say who it is, but he lives in Charlotte, uh, and he played with a great player. And he said, if he gave that player a pass and he shot a three and he made it, he said, you're done for the whole day. He's going to shoot all day. He is going to shoot all day. If he makes his first three. You're talking about Carmelo. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to say who it was, but it wasn't Carmelo. He said, once you get that guy, and he said, if he's shooting it and he, he makes that first one, he said, so what he used to do is pass the ball, give him a bad pass, so he couldn't set up and he'd have to pass it. I was like, wow. He said, yeah. That's the game you play. Yes. Do you guys, you just, you just out of the game now. Do you guys listen to the media? Are you aware of it? When you, somebody calls you a fraud, you do. Well, you didn't call him a fraud. You called the team a fraud. I called his team a fraud. He's a nice man. Fair. Whose team is it? His. Well. <laughs> so you call him a fraud. Okay, here it is. So you're telling me, as a husband, you call my wife a fraud. Oh, you I like that. Th you think you're not going get to get some of me? You should. Exactly. So okay. that's who it is. Second of all, fraud for college kids is such a harsh. Why are you? These kids <laughs> are building. They're going to college yeah. to build their life. And you're just going to knock them down like Ooh, that. that. Don't say it like that. It's true. That you are in a. Hey, they tell me all the time. You are in a position of power. Yeah. And, per, and persuade and encouragement. Yeah. You call them frauds. That was a little rough. A little. That's why they came at you after they win a championship. So you're, you well, do, you're, you're just, also, you're just you're, very real. You also yeah, talk I, about hey, somebody a fraud is not real. Steve, NFL. I keep it 100. <laughs> That's why he went zero to 100 on you. Because now you're giving them, in that same, in that same person, you're giving them that fake oh, love. Steve, here, here's all I said, Steve. I want you to listen to this. I, heard, it, I don't even have to listen to you. Dabo called. First of all, his nickname is Dabo, so he has street credit. Really? You yes. hear what Colin calls him? The dabster. The dabster. <laughs> Dabbo, Dab gonna see you somewhere, and oh, as, as they on. say here in Cap, Molly Wop you. Oh, dang, that was tough. So here's what Chris Carter said yesterday, Hall of Famer, about defensive backs that he thinks wide receivers are way more talented. And I want you to respond. Here's Chris Carter yesterday, kind of mocking all the defensive backs and the hail mary stuff. Rush four. Take the middle linebackers out of the middle of the field. We're not going to throw the ball in the middle. 
bump every guy on the outside and then keep three people in the end zone. And I'm going to tell you, the worst judge besides little kids playing soccer, DBs trying to judge a ball in the air where it's going to drop. They're awful. <laughs> DBs are frustrated running backs and wide receivers. No one wants to be a DB. They'd be a wide receiver if they could catch. They're just sitting there looking at the ball. Eli Apple, uh, come, uh, boom, drop right down on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's pretty good. Is there some truth to PBU that? PBU Kings. The what? PBU Kings. What's that mean? Pass breakups. <laughs> That's what they do. D defenders. Okay, so, so did you always feel like safety was a receiver that couldn't catch? I mean, at some point, whatever position you are, you are you have started at somewhere because you weren't as good. Great example is myself. I was a DB, could catch, but I was a, as they say, big mouth bass. What's that mean? Double moves. I, I'll, I'll go on. They give me a slant. I'll jump that slant till it was a go. And then all of a sudden, I'm playing chase. So I'm you chase you mode. you tend to be so aggressive. Yes. You, you bid on every because move. I can catch. Oh, so you go for the pick? Oh, definitely. So you you were they called you a big mouth bass? Yeah. So <sighs> I was right you there. You bite on everything. Yes, because I knew I can catch. <laughs> if I got my hands on it, gone. I'm gone. So they move your a coach move you to my, receiver at Santa Monica. They said, okay or good, DB, better receiver. And so you moved. And so they moved me. Okay, so Figure I, worked out. Yeah, it worked out just fine. Possibly. Not a fraud here. Oh, come on now. God, you're making me feel terrible. You should. All right, <laughs> so I've been critical of a professional coach, Mike Tomlin. Now, I've never said he should be fired, but I've said sometimes I feel like Mike's still got 22% player in him. And I'm like, he gets very emotional. He's got his coaches on the field grabbing Pac-Man. He's trying to trip a guy on the sidelines. And I'm like, Mike, your coach can't be a player. Will you defend him? What do you make of Tomlin? One, I, I think he's a good coach. His body of work speaks for itself. All right. If he got fired today, I think um, he would be hired. Yes. I think a lot of the coaches that are being fired, I think that's one of the – that is why all these coaches, all these uh, coordinators are looking to be hired because a lot of these older – or these coaches that have been head coaches now aren't very good, you know, at managing – the game and managing wins and getting wins, facilitating wins. And so with all that being said, you can't criticize him in the, magnet, in the manner of saying that what has happened to some of the guys, a la Joy Porter, unless Thompson was with him at that time and let that go on and said, hey, deuces, we got we to gotta practice them all. Each individual man – is responsible for their own actions. And also, obviously, if he, you know, from the reports, how he holds his liquor. If he can't hold his liquor, don't drink liquor. So that's on Joey Porter. Yes, that's on Joey Porter, because guess who's who's at a leave of absence right now? Joey Porter. Okay. Have you it, it, Did you ever play with a player who you thought that his personality undid his talent? That he was great, but he just couldn't um, manage himself. Yeah. I mean, the league, the, league, the league, the world, business world, technology, internet has showed that it is constant throughout every profession. I mean, there are CFOs that get fired because they can't keep their nose clean, literally. Yeah. There are politicians who have been called in bathrooms with, yeah. Uh, yeah. As, they, as we call yeah. it, that sidewalk chalk. Yeah. You know, there have been former players who have been removed from teams who've been out of the league, who's been suspended. They had a kid that was suspended. Um, he's been out of the league, I think, two or three years now. So society yes. struggles with managing themselves. It, uh, yes. Our our prison system shows that they, they struggle with it. You know, it, it, I think they're sometimes put people in position like of, of, of authority or we put in football and they say, well, you have to have a bigger responsibility. I don't think it's fair to say – that I have a bigger responsibility to teach your kids more than you teach your own. You know, I, I look at when I take, send my kids to school, I send my kids to school to be taught on top of what they're already learning at home. Right. That is, that's, my, that's how I feel. Some people will, may tweet and may say, yeah, you can say that now. But I have four kids who you may say, 
oh, Steve is, look how he, he acts on the field. Look, yeah. I've never been arrested for uh, some of the things that other people have. I've, I've stepped on some landmines myself and done some things that I'm not proud of that yeah. my kids know of yeah. that we've discussed and talked about. We got to go here, buddy. But to say that yeah. my responsibility as a parent is greater than yours Back. as your parents. Back for third hour next.